it's Ty aka Timberlands and welcome back to my channel. So this video is going to be broken up into two parts. The first part is going to be all the things they didn't tell you about pregnancy and then part two is going to be all the things they didn't tell you about postpartum. So let's go ahead and get started. As far as pregnancy goes, I think most of us know about like the common symptoms like um, exhaustion, being out of breath, all that kind of stuff. But I'm gonna talk about some of them that are common and then some of them that might not be as common or as well known because a lot of people don't talk about it. The first one I wanna talk about are your joints. So as far as your joints go, when you're pregnant, you are, at a, you are at a higher risk of injury because your joints tend to weaken. And that's just because of all the nice pregnancy hormones that come along with being pregnant. And that is one that I personally did experience myself. I remember that I tried to work out um, soon after I found out I was pregnant and I would notice that um, my left knee was in a lot of pain afterward and it was really hard to do things like squats. And um, my left knee specifically because I injured it several years ago, but it was just like, you know, all the working out I did that kind of helped build up the muscle tissue around the knee kind of just like went out the window. <laughs> so I remember I was telling my partner, I was like, I don't even want to do anything today because my knee is in so much pain and it really sucked. So just it, just as a, a caveat, all these, these symptoms don't happen to everybody some people get some some people don't get any whatever but um it is really common to notice some issues with your joints during pregnancy the next one i want to talk about is feet growth <laughs> so um that goes back to it kind of relates back to how you know your joints weaken it's the same thing with like the um the ligaments in your foot so a lot of women will lose their arch in their foot during pregnancy and as a result you become flat-footed and then your feet are longer like in your shoe so for me i've always been flat-footed so um it didn't really affect me much but i noticed some women who say like they they wore a certain shoe size before and then after pregnancy they had to go up a whole shoe size so don't be surprised if that happens to you another symptom that you can probably guess is going to be excess sweat and this kind of goes along with a lot of things for me i used to get super out of breath like really quick <laughs> like super quick i would go up the stairs and then I'm just like breathing hard and sweating and stuff, and stuff like that. Excess sweat could exist for several reasons. Hormones, you having to work harder to do things that you normally did before without problems. And then the blood volume increases as well in your body, which also tends to make you hotter. So there are several reasons why women get more sweaty and it's super annoying. It's really, really gross, but, um, I would just say make sure that your house is cool uh, wherever you live make sure you're cool and you know you wear nice breezy clothing unless of course you know it's cold outside or you live in a cooler environment but um during my pregnancy i used to keep i i think i kept our our house on no more than like 71. if it was like 72 and above i was not in a good mood i was uncomfortable so um, I definitely kept it like an igloo inside of my house. <laughs> Another symptom that a lot of people don't talk about as much is excess saliva, which is, ugh, I didn't necessarily have to deal with that symptom. Whenever I was dealing with nausea, sometimes the saliva production would increase like normal, but um, I know some women that had to carry around a spit cup. It's really gross but <laughs> um yeah the excess saliva can yeah i think you you get it it's it's nasty another one that i want to talk about is dry skin and this actually happened to me more toward the end of my pregnancy and then after i had my baby I had eczema and I'd never had like excessive dry skin problems before. Some women experience like eczema throughout their entire pregnancy or just general dry skin. 
Um, this kind of hit me more toward the end, but it was still annoying nonetheless. And then the dry skin kind of led to itchy skin. <laughs> Um, they don't always come in that combination. Some pre some pregnant women just have itchy skin and some pregnant women just have dry skin. But my dry skin led to my skin being a lot more itchy and it was really, really uncomfortable. Uh, for me, I think I end up using a lot of like coconut oil, um, especially right before and after having my baby and it helped. Um, my hands, I still deal with... Um, dry hands and I it's literally just my hands like the rest of my body is fine now even nine months later but I still have issues with my hands being super dry all the time like if you watch any of my other videos on this channel I know y'all be seeing my ashy hands you gotta lie to me that's just something that hasn't gone away yet so I'm gonna try to use um some type of maybe eczema lotion just to get the extra moisture but um, and it sucks right now too because it's getting cold outside which means that my hands are going to be even more dry but we'll figure it out staying on the topic of skin I want to talk about skin tags <laughs> and um, with skin I didn't get skin tags thankfully but if you don't know what a skin tag is it's like a small little growth that you can get on um, the outer skin and they are not cute <laughs> they're not cute at all if you haven't seen them just go ahead and google them but um some women get like an excess of skin tags these just weird like ugh. It, it is treatable and you can you can get them removed but i'm pretty sure that they can also be extremely annoying but um i didn't get them i know some people who did and they hated them I was battling between talking about skin tags and talking about like cellulites and stretch marks, but I feel like cellulites and stretch marks is pretty common. Um, but skin tags, yeah. And then sometimes women experience discoloration of the skin, like darker um, spots, especially in your belly area, which you'll notice more so after you have the baby, which I'll talk about that in the part two of this video. The next one I wanna talk about is gingivitis. <laughs> we can blame pregnancy hormones for that one as well. Um, typically the gums start to get like a little softer and the softer the gums are, you're gonna have like, you know, stuff getting caught in it and they're gonna get ir irritated. Sometimes they'll bleed, um, but yeah, gingivitis, I did have gingivitis during my pregnancy and really to combat that just getting the teeth cleaning make sure that you do visit your dentist that's really important during pregnancy and also just flossing and like rinsing really really good to get all like the food out can help help you get past it it is really uncomfortable just because when you do brush your teeth you may experience a lot of tenderness and bleeding i would definitely suggest switching to a different toothbrush just because if you're used to using like a medium or hard bristle toothbrush that might be too intense for your gums at the time so um for me i just flossed as much as possible and um i just kept my mouth clean i probably brushed my teeth way more during pregnancy than like usual the other big one i want to talk about and i've already made videos on this one before so you probably know where i'm getting with this um implantation bleeding so I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I've made two videos about implantation bleeding, which I will link below if that's one that you're really curious about. Um, but I just have to say bleeding does sometime occur during pregnancy. It is not a period. Um, if you are, if you do have like an ongoing pregnancy, no red flags or anything going on, bleeding sometimes does occur and sometimes it can happen more than once. There's some women who may experience it the entire time and it there's a lot of factors behind it so the first thing is implantation bleeding which usually happens early on in pregnancy in the first trimester so for me i had implantation bleeding at what i believe was four weeks and i had it again at nine weeks and um i had it again because my baby wasn't she hadn't completed her implantation process so once she finally got to that final spot, then I had another episode of implantation bleeding. Um, and that doesn't happen to everybody, but it is more common than what you'll find if you're trying to look for something on Google. 
Um, the other thing that I want to talk about is um, your so your your nice little reproductive parts, your cervix. All that stuff is going to be a lot more sensitive during pregnancy. So you may notice a little bit of bleeding after having sex. Um, it can occur just randomly, like you just never really know. Sometimes it's just a little bit of spotting, but it does happen. As usual, like I always say on my channel, when it pertains to something that could be medical, definitely always check with your provider, but it does happen. It can be scary. For a good amount of the time, it's it's okay. You know, it happens. I was super scared the first couple times, um, but after kind of learning a lot more about implantation bleeding and other type of pregnancy bleeding, I didn't I didn't think about it much after that. Another really annoying part of pregnancy is everything that can happen to your vagina. <laughs> so the first one I want to talk about is BV, which is bacterial vaginosis. And um, this one is really common. I did have it. I got rid of it by, I want to say my second trimester because my midwife didn't want me on medication. So just to backtrack. Um, this is basically when the pH inside of your, your vagina has shifted and it can cause like a lot of discharge. It can cause a fishy smell. Just kind of as a woman in general, a lot of things can set off BV and that can be like soaps. It can be laundry detergent, um, the fabric that you wear around your lady parts. It can be having sex because um, semen can change the pH of your vagina, a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, you can look at your vagina the wrong way and then you give BV. You just, you never know. <laughs> um, but during pregnancy, that just increases exponentially. So um, the hormones can cause your pH to change or you can have any of those other things happen that I mentioned and then voila, you have BV. It doesn't take a lot and it doesn't mean that someone's dirty. It doesn't mean that someone doesn't like wash properly. No, they shouldn't put soap down there because sometimes that causes BV. Um, it's something that is very common amongst women in general, both pregnant and non-pregnant women. So it's really, really annoying. Now, that said, there are several ways that you can combat BV. I'm going to be speaking more so toward... Um, I'm gonna be speaking more so toward while you're pregnant. There are some suppositories that you can find on Amazon that are safer um, to use during pregnancy. Boric acid is effective, but I would not recommend that while you're pregnant. So don't do that. But outside of pregnancy, that can be pretty effective. You can take a sitz bath with baking soda with apple cider vinegar. I did those, but again, it did not work for me. So I did have to do antibiotics because I was not responding to the natural treatments, unfortunately, but once I took the antibiotics, it wiped it out, everything was good. That's something that you can discuss with whoever is helping you through your pregnancy, whether you have an OB, a midwife, whoever, um, but just try to find a solution that works for you. <clears throat> Honestly, with anything, um, you can get all kind of, of vaginal infections during pregnancy, yeast infections, BV, whatever. Just it's something that can happen from all kinds of things. So hemorrhoids. A lot of times during pregnancy, constipation and hemorrhoids kind of go hand in hand. I was constipated my entire pregnancy. Like it was so rough trying to get a bowel movement, but um, I tried to con I tried to eat as much fiber as I could so I could kind of you know keep everything flowing. Um, but I got a, I got hemorrhoids a couple times during pregnancy, kind of early on. And then I got it right before I had my baby. Hemorrhoids a lot of times happens when you're straining and if you're constipated, you're probably pushing harder than you should. That can lead to just bleeding, which is usually pretty mild, um, bleeding, irritation, it can burn, it can make going to the restroom uncomfortable in general. Um, and it can really hurt when you do finally have a bowel movement. The main thing you want to do during pregnancy is to try to eat things that will help you poop regularly. So you're not straining, um, 
when you're on the toilet. Also, changing the position of how you're sitting on the toilet can help as well. I usually try to keep my feet propped up um, because that puts less stress on my intestines and it kind of helps everything move down. So um, they have like squatty potties. I didn't have a squatty potty, but I used the bucket and it worked just as fine. Please make sure that you're making toilet time as easy as possible. <laughs> Um, but there's also stuff that you can do for hemorrhoids. You can take a sitz bath, like I said before, to kind of help soothe it. You can also use creams. Again, that's something that you want to discuss with your care provider. The next thing I want to talk about is HG, um, which is hyperemesis. And it's not just regular pregnancy nausea. I didn't have hyperemesis Thank God. I did have really bad nausea, but it wasn't like it was not classified as HG at all. And I'm so happy for that. But it is like above extreme nausea. So women who get HG during pregnancy, um, it's like all day, every day. And it lasts for several, several, several months. I had bad nausea for I think like five months of my pregnancy. But with HG... <laughs> It can last the entire time. It is a medical condition that has to be treated by a doctor. And um, <clears throat> I did have a friend who had it. And I know she was just plain miserable for like the majority of her pregnancy. It can cause, with the excessive vomiting, it can cause issues with the throat. You're losing nutrients, which means the baby isn't getting nutrients. Dehydration, not being able to keep things down which ultimately le leads to hospitalization for some women just to make sure that they can, you know, ensure that the mom and the baby are getting the nutrients that they need. Uh, it could be, it can lead to extreme weight loss during pregnancy. It can lead to the baby not gaining weight as, as they should. So it is a very serious condition. And when you have it, you'll know. <laughs> it, is, it is not one of those things that you'll have and you won't know about it. You will definitely know. Just make sure that you are getting that taken care of to make sure that the rest of your pregnancy goes really smooth. And the last thing that I want to talk about is gas. <laughs> so that is not by any means the worst or the most extreme uh, pregnancy symptom, but it's one that... I don't think people talk about it as much in detail. When I tell you pregnancy gas is the worst gas you will ever smell and or experience, it is bad. Like, <laughs> I would blow myself away pretty much my entire pregnancy. And I was just like, I really, on the one hand, it really sucked to not be around people during my pregnancy, but it also probably was a really good thing because I was like, Man, it, it it's bad. And it's like all the time. So the gas can be because of hormones. It can be um, because of the constipation, which makes it worse because all of that stuff is trapped in there. And the only thing that's getting out is air. It, it It's rough and it's, it's, it's bad. So as far as the gas, I'm sure there are things that you can take during pregnancy to kind of help calm it down. But the main thing you want to make sure is that there's not stuff trapped in there that's making the gas much worse. Um, gas bubbles, trapped gas during pregnancy also can be extremely painful. It can make you feel like you're in labor, like, like you feel like you're having either a contraction or some type of extreme pain. Um, trapped gas is not, is not fun at all. And that's something you want to talk to your provider about, some things you can take and try to um, help uh, mitigate the issue. But that was one of the most annoying ones that I had consistently the entire nine months. So yeah, if you're lucky, you won't, you won't get the bad gas. Most pregnant women I'm, that I've known have gotten bad gas though. So I don't know. So that's pretty much all I have for this video. If there's something that you experienced during pregnancy that most people don't really talk about, feel free to drop it in the comments or if you had a common symptom that was like super extreme during your pregnancy, please feel free to share that. I would love to read through y'all's stories, but that's pretty much all I have. As usual, be sure to click my link tree and follow me on social media and then like, subscribe, and share if you enjoyed this video. All right, y'all, I will see y'all next time.